This is my first DIY project that I have ever tackled. I was like sweating and I was so nervous. <laughs> that was the hardest, most unsafe thing I've ever done. What's up guys, I'm Becca and you're watching our channel, Royce and Becca, and we are a channel about marriage and family life. So welcome, if you're new here, welcome back. If you're old, no, no you know what I mean. <laughs> Today on the channel, I am so excited about this one because this is something I've been wanting to do for a very long time and that is board and batten. If you guys follow us on Instagram, you know from our stories that I've been working on this project. This is the wall. I love it so much. This is my first DIY project that I have ever tackled and I'm really, really excited to share it with you guys. I am definitely a gung-ho person and Royce is like a little more timid and so... I have an issue with the word timid. <laughs> okay. Beep! <laughs> Royce is a little more... Reticent. What's that? Just go with that. What's reticent? I'm not gonna say a word, I don't know. I needed to convince Royce. And so I gave him some examples and I gave him a budget, which I went over um, just I didn't know that. by a little bit, <laughs> just by a little bit. Today I wanna to walk you through the, kind of the journey of this little DIY project. And to be clear, this is not a tutorial video because there are definitely things that I would change about how I did things. And that's kind of what I wanna share in this video. All the products and the supplies that I used, I will list in the description below, just in case you feel brave enough to tackle this project at home. So the beginning of the project, I had to remove the existing plant shelf and I had to remove the existing chair rail. And I would say this was the part that I was most nervous about because I didn't know, I've never done that before. I just Googled how to remove a chair rail from a wall. I feel like that was like my first demo that I wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out. And when I removed it, I was like sweating and I was so nervous. <laughs> but it came out great. I just scored the caulk and I just pried it off of the wall and it came right off. One thing that I would definitely change in the future was how I smoothed out the remnants of the chair rail and the drywall. When I tore, thing off, part of the drywall like came off, but I didn't really know what to do about it. I probably should have Googled what to do, but I just kind of spackled it thinking that maybe it would just smooth it out. And it didn't, it didn't quite do the greatest job. And I'm not here to tell you that this is a perfect project because by no means is this perfect. What I did before I purchased any of the boards was decide how tall I wanted it and decide what kind of boards I wanted. There was a lot of different things about MDF board, pre-primed wood, and I went with regular, I wanna say white pine is what I did. It was just the cheap lumber at Lowe's. Looking back on it, that is definitely something I would change. I would absolutely spend the extra money to get the MDF board because wood boards are not even. They're like warped and that definitely reared its ugly head in the middle of this project. Look at this, guys. How did you not even see that? No, I saw it. That it was over? Yeah. Well, I then just- Then why did you nail it? I just saw that it wasn't going to be perfect. <laughs> There's the caulk in there trying, really trying in vain to uh, <laughs> You thought the caulk was gonna be able to fill it. But hopefully I fixed it, it'll be fine. I determined how tall, how long, how wide I wanted all the boards so that I could ask them at Lowe's to pre-cut my wood. That also didn't turn out the greatest. They sell wood at Lowe's that's 12 feet long, which is what I needed at the top part because that's how long this wall is, it's 12 feet. But I couldn't fit that in my car, so I needed them to cut it in half. Well, the joint, when you put them together on the wall, there's like a seam there, and one of the ways to help with the seam is to cut the corners off of the wood and then they'll sit more flush together on the wall. Well, the best way to do that is to have a table saw. <laughs> I don't have a table saw. Oh my gosh, 
It's embarrassing. This is the part of this project that I'm embarrassed to share because first of all, no safety goggles. Second of all, no gloves for protection. Third of all, that wood was flopping all over the place in that dinky little plastic thing that I tried to put the dumb, I don't even know what kind of saw it is. I just have this random saw because I tried to get a manual one and that thing was not working. Okay, so that didn't work and um, it's gonna be real janky, so don't touch me. So that was the hardest, most unsafe thing I've ever done. All this to say, if I could do it again, I would either borrow, rent, or buy a table saw. By the time I was ready to put the boards on the wall, I got to use my new handy dandy nail gun. Okay, so I just looked up a YouTube video on how to do the, my nail gun. I have loaded my construction adhesive. The line is level on the wall and my boards are janky, but they're cut in 45 degree angles on the end so they fit better. I've already learned how to do like seven things that I have never done. And I'm a little stressed, but I'm gonna keep going forward because I have no other choice. Another process of this was the adhesive, the construction adhesive on the back of the boards. I originally wasn't gonna add that. I just felt it in my gut that I should just buy it, just in case. I'm so glad that I did because as I was applying the board to the wall, it helped it stick there until I could get the nails in the board to attach it securely to the wall. Philip is afraid of the nail guns. <laughs> I got the horizontal board first, and then I put the vertical battens in, and then I put the picture rail on top. I wanted a picture rail on top so we could put some fun decorations up there, and I feel like it would have just looked not my style if I didn't have a bunch of pictures on the ledge. So after I got all the wood on the walls, then I had to go back through and do the wood filler. Now this is where I really relied on the wood filler to correct my sawing mistake from earlier. It did a pretty good job, but I will say it is not perfect and you can definitely see it. Those are the things you learn when you're doing a DIY project. Once I started caulking and that was, that was interesting. This is the first time I've ever done this in my life. So far it's going okay. It's kind of messy. I didn't know that. I'm grateful that I had a wet towel to clean things up as I went. I think I'm getting into like a rhythm. Do a little bead. And then I do my same finger so I'm not getting all my fingers all weird. Wipe it away. And then we got to painting. My big goal is to actually get all of the painting done today um, between bo both of Philippa's naps and after she goes to bed. But I don't know if that's possible. Peel and Stick Wallpaper by Roommates. I will link them in the description below and I will actually link the exact wallpaper that I bought. I bought it off Amazon. I was a little nervous because wallpaper can cause some anxiety attacks in some people and I was pleasantly surprised. I think all in all it took me about 30 minutes to do that whole top section with wallpaper. And I think the hardest part was lining up the pattern. So I did all of the priming, all of the painting, and the wallpaper all in the same day because I was just so ready to get it done. That night, um, we were finished. It was around dinner time, and I was like started to try and decorate it, but 
I was so tired. I was so sore from like standing for two and a half days straight. And Royce is like, maybe we should stop for tonight. So I went to bed and I just laid there thinking about it. And I was like trying to think of other decorations that we have in the house. And I was like, okay, I can't sleep. And I'm just gonna keep thinking about this. So it was probably 1130, about midnight that I got back up and I finished the decoration and I really love it a lot. And I really wanted a circle feature because the wall is so square and it has the squares in it and the picture ledge is square. It's all square. I wanted something round and I really feel like that gold, my gold piece helps bring in another element. It has the shiny element, it's got a round element, it's got texture to it. And I felt like it would look really good on the white and gray wall. It does. My letter board is also up there with a new quote from Bob Goff's book, Everybody Always. So all in all, that was my first DIY project. Would I do this again in the future? Absolutely, I love it. I Every time I walk into the dining room now, I am just happy. My original budget was about $150 and I spent a little closer to $300 and I feel like I have birthed somebody new. What do you think, babe? I think so. I am a little bit more confident. I think I have a little bit more realistic experience working with tools, working with wood, working with wallpaper. There's just a lot of elements to this project that were completely new to me. And how I found out how to do it was through YouTube. I just went for it. If there's a project that you have been wanting to do, I encourage you to just go for it. It's not gonna be perfect. Mine is not perfect, but I really like it. I'm really proud of myself and I cannot wait to tackle the next project. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please leave a like, that really helps us out. And if you're new here and you want some more videos about marriage and family life and just life in general, that's what we're here to do. And we would love for you to join us. We hope that you have enjoyed watching these videos. Please hit that subscribe button. I think that's it. From our dining room to your living room or your iPhone, wherever you are. Goodbye. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. <laughs> Bye, guys.